past 24 hours might offer some insight into what a Starmer-led Labour government could look like. And for many on the left, it could be summed up by a single word, McCarthyism. Yes, McCarthyism describes the post-war Red Scare era in the United States, in which individuals suspected of left-wing activity faced opaque political persecution over alleged links to communism. But for some on the right, the last 24 hours within Labour looks more like a series of Stalinist purges. But was this all as ruthless as Stalin, or as hapless as Mr Bean? Well, first it was Diane Abbott. The Labour member for Hackney North and Stoke Newington told a crowd outside Hackney Town Hall last night. She said, as long as it is possible, I will be your MP for Hackney North and Stoke Newington. I will not let myself be intimidated. First, Keir Starmer insisted the investigation into Abbott's allegedly anti-Semitic remarks was, was still underway. Well, then it emerged the investigation concluded half a year ago. Then we were told she was being banned from standing as a Labour MP, only for then it to be reported that she was hoping to retire with dignity. But now Labour says no decision has been taken and open warfare has opened up over the last three days. The latest development is Angela Rayner and a host of trade unions are demanding that Abbott does stand as a Labour candidate. But perhaps Miss Abbott was really just the canary in the coal mine. Yesterday, left-wing Labour MP Lloyd Russell Moyle announced he'd been suspended from the Labour Party just hours before Parliament dissolved, following what he called a vexatious and politically motivated complaint about his behaviour eight years ago. The complaint being lodged at such a late date means he's unable to stand in the upcoming election. And in what appears to be a confirmation of a particular peculiar pattern of purging candidates, Faiza Shaheen, who was set to be Labour's candidate for Chingford, has been told she cannot stand following an inquisition from Labour's National Executive Committee. Well, they heard about posts she'd liked on social media about the Israel-Palestine conflict that go back as far as 2014. Here's what she told BBC Newsnight. I, I, honestly, I'm just so shocked right now to be treated this badly after being such an active member of the party. And, you know, we were one of the tiny number, six Tory held seats in 2019 that had a swing to Labour. To act like I am some kind of person that can't, you know, that isn't good at elections, that, you know, that frustrates the Labour's, Labour's purpose. Well, the great irony here is that the Labour Party is positioning itself as a rules based party. A party of stability, a party of grown-ups. However, we're not seeing this principle playing out when it comes to this chaotic candidate purge and self-inflicted civil war. Perhaps that's why a hastily briefed out newsline hits journalist inbox this evening. A new Tory to Labour defection from the former Conservative MP Mark Logan. Although in making his announcement public, Logan was desperately keen to tell everyone that the press release was not hasty at all. Instead, that his letter was written yesterday, when he was still an MP. He was curiously keen to point out the date, which was handwritten on that letter. Now, if this was really written yesterday, why wasn't it released yesterday? Hmm. Far from it, me to say, but uh, a cynic might think that the letter was in fact written in haste today, and simply backdated in order to keep MP on the letterhead and to distract from Labour's bizarre, self-inflicted civil war. But what's the truth of it all? Well, I'm delighted to be joined now by contributing editor to Novara Media, Michael Walker, and my panel, GB News senior political commentator, Nigel Nelson, and conservative peer and journalist, Lord Goodman. Uh, Michael, gonna start with you. The Labour Party is clearly going through a bit of a tumultuous time at a time when they're 20, or if you believe some polls, 30 points ahead. Why are they doing this to themselves? I suppose there's two theories. I mean, one, that there are some fairly unpleasant people around Keir Starmer. I do think that seems to be the case with Diane Abbott. So it seems that with Diane Abbott, there was an issue whereby there was going to be a choreographed exit. Obviously, you know, she's clearly towards the end of her career. Maybe she can stand one more time, but she's not sort of at the beginning of her career. So I think there, uh, there was an issue where people around Keir Starmer just couldn't help but brief to the press in a way that would humiliate her. And that's why this whole thing has massively blown up. I think there's a separate issue with people such as Pfizer Shaheen, which is that the leadership is terrified of there being any kind of charismatic young politician in the party who might question their authority. And 
You know, this might make sense if there was this huge block of left-wing MPs who are really going to make life a, a nightmare for Keir Starmer. But if you look at the Labour MPs and what they've been doing over the past four years, they've been incredibly quiet, right? Keir Starmer's authority within the Labour Party is absolutely assured. And this, to me, seems to be sort of really unnecessary and sort of his authoritarian nastiness. Mm. Lord Goodwin. Um, Lord Goodman, sorry. Is this paranoia at the top of the Labour Party? Keir Starmer's never going to be stronger within the Labour Party than he is now. The general election approaching, they all want to get the Conservatives out and they're willing to march in step to do that. That situation will change after the general election. The left hasn't gone away. If they have a big majority, it will actually loosen inhibitions about opposing the government. If they have a small one, I was in Parliament during uh, the last Blair uh, government, and you had individual MPs on the left causing him a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. So Starmer's wanting to move now while he's at his strongest, and that's why he's done it, justly or unjustly. And Nigel Nelson, there's a long and proud tradition within the Labour Party of purges from one faction to the other. Some say that one faction within the Labour Party probably hates the other faction within the Labour Party more than they hate the Tories. Yeah, well, it's very tribal and tribes go to war with each other. So um, that certainly happens in the Labour Party. On these, th these three different things, Diane Abbott will probably be allowed back in. I, I think she'll be able to stand. Um, I can't say after all the fuss that's been going on that she won't be able to. Um, uh, Lloyd Russell Moore's a different case. It depends very much when the the complaint against him was made? Was it before the, before the election was announced or after? If it was after the election was announced, then he's got a, he's got a reasonable suspicion that um, this is politically motivated. But it almost doesn't matter, does it? I mean, the same thing happened to uh, Ross Thompson, the Conservative MP up in Aberdeen, who had a complaint lodged against him. It was later found to not be upheld by the House of Commons authorities. But that hung over him when the 2019 election was called, yeah. and so he couldn't stand. He yeah. lost his seat. And this is obviously what's, what, what's, what's happened to Lloyd. But what, what I'm saying is that um, it's not politically motivated if the complaint was made before the election was announced last Wednesday. We know the complaint went in last week. We don't know when last week. Well, well, actually, um, we, we, sorry, we don't know how many other complaints have been lodged about other people and what the Labour leadership has done in respect of those well, complaints. There's, there's that too. Well, we also know that the original complaint refers to something which allegedly happened eight years ago. So whether or not it was before or after the election was called, it seems to me the timing is somewhat suspicious. We've also learnt today that the person who's most likely to be parachuted into that seat um, worked in Keir Starmer's office for sort of most of the last eight years. Mm. So the idea that you can suddenly, oh, we've, we've suddenly got this incredibly worrying complaint that refers to something that happened eight years ago. This person can't stand and there can't be any process whereby they can try and clear their name because we don't have time. Oh, and it just so happens um, that someone I'm very close to and a good close friend of mine can, can take that seat. Don't worry. But Michael Walker, didn't exactly the same thing happen under the last leadership? In one of the Ilford seats, you had a centrist uh, called Jazz who was standing. Many people thought he would get selected for that seat. And then on the last minute, an anonymous complaint about his behaviour was put in. Many months later, it was found to be dropped and, uh, and not mean anything. But it meant that a Corbynista by the name of Santari took that seat without the opposition from the centrist person. Uh, this, this has happened before from the other angle. I think you can find examples of this sort of when there's any leader. I think the, the overwhelming sort of preponderance of it here and just this enormous, I think this is a purge because you're seeing the number of people. One thing that's also sort of worth noting here, McCarthyism, lots of that was not just about the people who you punish, it was the fear you instill in everyone else. Mm. And you know that there are a lot of MPs in the Labour Party now who feel completely outraged by what's happening to Diane Abbott, by what's happened to Faisal Shaheen none of them are saying a word because they're all absolutely terrified that there is no due process in this political party and the moment they step out of line they can be kicked out. This is fascinating. I was watching a Labour MP uh, on a television programme on Tuesday night who kept saying the words, I, I, I don't think Starmer's done anything wrong but some of his advisers might be uh, pushing him in the wrong direction. It's like what was said to medieval kings. Mm. No, his majesty cannot do any wrong but some of his advisers, well they might be badly advised. It's your death of Stalin tweet. <laughs> yes, yes, because of course there were sort of th th this climate of fear that, that went across it. But perhaps that's what Keir Starmer wants to project. Well, right? I, 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 have to, I have to say for the sort of voters he's trying to project too, 
I'm not sure. The Diane Abbott business aside, where he's, he or some of his advisors anyway have clearly not succeeded in doing what they want to do. I think at this particular point in time, projecting strength to that group of voters is a winner for him. Whether or not we'll all regret it in the longer term is a different matter. It would be a winner for him if it was projecting strength. But if Nigel Nelson's right, this will be a botched coup. Yes, and I think... botched coups yes, it, yeah. tend to leave those who tried to perform them weaker than otherwise. And the Pfizer Shaheen thing, I think, is a particular case here. I mean, um, I've been looking through the, the tweets now, and none of them, as far as I can see, would warrant her being suspended and therefore not allowed to stand. So, he, I mean, it seems to me that they've, they've hit the wrong target. There. It's not like we had in Rochdale, where the mm. candidate was saying Israel actually let, uh, let mm. uh, the massacre happen. Just a final well, word to uh, Michael Walker. Well, they've hit the right target if what they wanted to do was deny any opposition within the party. I mean, I don't think she even, you know, the interviews Pfizer Shaheen gave to Newsnight was actually quite magnanimous about Keir Starmer considering what had happened to her. But she's very articulate, very talented. She's from the area, working class background, went on to be a professor at a university of inequality. She is leadership material, really. And I think that's probably why they've picked on this one person for incredibly spurious reasons, even though she's had a baby two months ago.